So today on the podcast we have, this is our third podcast now, I think it is, yeah, January, February, March, April 3rd or 4th, don't know, but anyway, we've got a special guest today, and we're in a special place, so we're in Lanzarote, it is Semana Blanca, which means it's half term, and we've come out to see Jessica, who is our appointment specialist here on the island, so if you're getting an on to visa, when you come to register it, you'll be meeting Jesse in Arrecife, Arrecife isn't it? Yep. And um, but not only is Jess our appointment specialist here on the island, she is also a radio DJ host for Monster Radio, and she also works around and karaoke, etc. In the local area, she's a bit of a local celeb. Let's be honest. Don't play it now. <laughs> you are, aren't you? Come on, everybody knows you here. Yeah, yeah don't they? they do. Which is really nice for our clients because they'll be, you know, one moment you're there getting an LV registered, and then you come on, you look at the radio on, and there's Jess. Exactly. You know, and so. they come to the quiz and bingos as well. And they come to the quiz and bingos. Yeah, and well. karaoke. So a little bit of everything. So what's it? So tell us about your. Uh, your career here on the island then, being My a local career? celeb, what's no, it like? I just do a bit of everything, do, yeah. like we just said, karaoke, yeah. quizzes, and as well this morning you joined me on the radio, which was fun, so that's every Saturday from 11 to 1. So that's like you, that's your brunch show. That is right, the brunch show. It. Thank you very yeah, much. Yes. I want to keep one menu, right? Okay, yeah. thank you. So you have a special Thank you. Oh, yeah, no worries, we will do. So what we're going to do now, as we've just been told, we've just been served our very cold beers. I'm on holiday, so I don't care if the podcast uh, has got a beer in it. But we have got to get rid of this menu. And we are sorry if the camera shakes a little bit because it's extremely windy. But this is the only sunny, real sunny day we've had. So, uh, yeah, it's a bit shaky, a bit windy, but gorgeous setting. And we've just been served our pints cheers cheers <laughs> so anyway back to what we're talking about we're talking more about monster radio then because that's like sort of huge on the island now isn't it yeah it was it's obviously since covid we were then still allowed to broadcast through covid so that helped with people knowing about it and right. gave out information when that was happening yeah that was the only time i was allowed out on saturday <laughs> morning we had to get a little piece of paper from, stamped from the police station to state that we could drive backwards and forwards to wow. the studio yeah so that was my only way to get out of the house and that was when the studio was in player honda yeah? player honda yeah, yeah. right and now it's in tias yeah tias and yes yeah, so most radios you just put us in it helps if you ever come people come on holiday to Lanzarote it's, yeah. it helps if you tune into Monster Radio because it'll tell you things about the bars the deals things that are going on also sometimes the Monster Radio presenters will do a road show so they'll go out to the bars and, and do shows so that the people can come in and see yeah. the presenters doing their thing really cool and, it's, and you, but you have got quite um, a following as well I noticed this morning so I was on the show this morning um, it's sort of it's my first time I've ever been on the radio, and they've got the setup. Obviously, there's two studios because they have to switch between them, <laughs> and then like modern day, you've got WhatsApp. So WhatsApp, the messaging, basically, isn't it? The yeah. platform, and and all the people who are watching the show, the requests come through WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that you've got a global following because there was people in Scotland, <laughs> people yeah. in India, was it? India, yeah, India, Roman India, Rob, to be fair, Roman yeah. Rob. But so there's all these people who've got an affiliation with the island. Mm -hmm. But they're all around the world and they're following you listening to your breakfast show. Well, your brunch show. My brunch show, yeah. So, no, it's good. Yeah. I do other shows. Sometimes I do spin-off shows. I did a yeah. classical one not long ago. Uh, Boom Boom Bangers, I used to do that every Friday. But now just the Saturday normal show. But there's loads of different genres of music and just tune in. People tune in. Yeah, it's nice. It's sort of... Um, I think nowadays, and we have it with our channel as well, like we've been trying to um, not do so much sort of boring this is straight content and so people like to get involved it's more of a community thing. it is community radio basically yeah. well this morning we just we were, we were good and we didn't know what we were playing what we were no. going to say and it just sort of rolled off as it did yeah no we definitely didn't plan anything which is um a little bit like a lot of videos are doing the channel that's the best <laughs> I way get though, a isn't subject it? and i'm thinking about it but i sometimes think oh that's <laughs> going to be a really good idea to have that on the channel i need to talk about s1s because we've had this update and i might script about five lines but that'd be me yeah you know, sometimes i think it's better like that yeah i think so people yeah. get to know how you are like yeah. with me you receive what you see is what you get or what you hear sorry <laughs> yeah. Yeah. no and what, and what about um so moving off so you lived on the mainland for a bit did yeah in salute 
And um, did I mention that you're my sister? Not this did time. I, not this time. Did we? We, did, we did a pre-recorded <laughs> test. Uh, we did. So Jess is also my sister-in-law. And Jess moved to Spain when she was very young. She was 16, 17 when you were in Spain. Yeah. Yeah. I lived in Salou. And, um, so what's, I mean, obviously I've lived in Salou, I've lived in Granada, I've lived in Malaga, but always on the mainland. Yeah. Catalonia is very different to Andalusia. Yeah. Um, what's it? But then I come here and this is completely different. I this mean, is like, very, it's a tourist island as in, it's 365 days a year. Yeah. Whereas in Salou it's six months, isn't it? And then it goes to winter time, same as probably Malaga area, but yeah. this is summer all the time normally. Yeah. And yet it's just a very touristy island. This this island actually thrives off tourism. There's, I wouldn't say there's many things that are not to do with tourists, yeah. like in the working section. So, and yeah, there's a, probably more English and British yeah. Europeans than there is Spanish on this island now because it's so, so many different nationalities is, come to this island. It does cater for, I mean, I, was, I, I say we have, so on the Costa del Sol, is everybody thinks of the Costa del Sol as a tourist place. Yeah. It really is all year round now, but it's not the same demographic all year round. You know, not everywhere opens all year round. So if you go down to the coast, um, I mean, notice how much busier the airport was this February than when we've travelled in the past in winter. Um, but the demographic changes, it tends to be maybe older city break kind of people in the winter, you know, whereas in the summer we, it's families. But here, it's just all year round, all year round, isn't it? Oh, we get uh, here as well, we get the, the summer kids, you know, the families yeah. that come over and we call them the swallows. So that's for people that are coming from England or Europe or Ireland and they come for three months. Right. So they stay on the island for three months and then they go home. I've got clients now that come to every quiz and bingo yeah. and they're here for three months. Then they'll go back for like a week and then come back again for another two right. weeks. But yeah, and it's very, I'll be honest, there's a lot of return people to Lanzarote. They will come every holiday. So you'll see them three or four times a year. But you can see you can see why. We noticed that yesterday. So we saw that in Salou when we lived there that people used to repeat because there's yeah. always a familiarity with the places you go. That's true. And yesterday when we walked down here, the guy from the Chinese restaurant for the first evening. Yeah. So the first evening we arrived really late. But, uh, Jess kindly bought us some, some food and stuff, but we fancied something warm. So we walked down the front and as a Chinese restaurant, it was just closing. And um, and the guy who came out was hilarious. But it happened twice, actually. It happened to the Italian as well. Oh, yeah. So, and we're walking down, and the, as we walked past, the same guy the following day was like, hey, how's your holiday going? He wasn't trying to sell us food or anything. He was just no. being really friendly. And then when we walked past the Italian, which was uh, a couple of nights ago when you were working, we went there. Yeah. And the same guy came out and just said, hey, how's it going? Going, you know, and I was thinking, yeah, you're already familiar. There's about 500 bars up here, but they're so good at what they do. It's the bars, yeah. But it is big, isn't it? I mean, well, the island's small. You can actually drive the island in like four hours. You can do apparently yeah. the whole island. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Fort Aventura is just over there. Yeah. You can get to that by a ferry for half an hour. Wow. So I'd sometimes go over there with my friends. We'll get the ferry over, stay the night, and then come back just to get and, off this island. And that's from Playa Blanca. From Playa Blanca, yeah. We drive to Playa Blanca first, and then yeah. But quick boat ride across to there. Right. The, the Monster Radio actually reaches to Fort Aventura as well, the Does top hand of the island. Yeah. So if people that are in Fort Aventura can tune into Monster as well. Cool. But obviously on the internet, anybody can listen. Can't on you? the internet, yeah. If you go through obviously Alexa and ask for Monster Radio tuning live app, yeah. Then anyone can. I say my. I've got friends in Thailand that tune in over yeah. in Thailand and India Rob's in India wow yeah. this, everywhere cool. it's cool and what's it so you know the island obviously different to being in mainland do you, do you miss living on the mainland at all or is island life a little bit tonight? I do miss it you've been in the respect of there's more going on so you can go to the big yeah. bustling cities and there's fears and things like that and but I mean, we do have carnival here. In fact, carnival's on today in Costa Teguise yeah. and Tinaco. You missed last week, it was here. So they do a massive procession all the way along the strip, yeah. and it's like floats and costumes, and it's like that's every year, so that's good. Because here, we're in, I don't think I mentioned we're in Puerto del Carmen. Yeah. And the Puerto del Carmen is part of Tears mm. in Town Hall. And now, this is the kind of thing that we only see with paperwork in the office. So when I'm sat in the office, I'll see a, a Padron certificate come in and it will say tears <clears throat> and I'll be like oh well yeah we've got to go and visit that town hall because we've got clients coming and need some content but I didn't realise how big the municipality of tears is because it's I've just been up to the town which is huge it's actually up there 
from that hill, that's why I've just been there. Yeah. Wow. So it's like you see it right in the distance at the top of the mountain next to a volcano. Yeah. And then we're right on the seafront. It's very, very similar to Mikas Costa. I'd have to check the square kilometer each, if that's a word, and the population. <laughs> but it's got a mountain part to it where the town hall is but then it's got this front which goes from a place called Matagorda yeah. all the way down to the port and it must have about a thousand bars it's just literally you can walk the whole way yeah it's it incredible I've never everywhere. seen so much food the first thing I would say to somebody if they're coming because we consider going all inclusive and yeah, I could say don't don't ever here, no. No. no and it's the, the food here is not like you've mentioned about how expensive it is in Malaga for breakfast. Yeah. How much did you pay this morning? Four euros. For a belly buster. And then it was, then it's 3 95 So you can get, I mean, I suppose we always talk about this on the channel as well, about getting your economy right. Yeah. So when people come from the UK and they're buying a property somewhere, for example, you have to place yourself in the economy of the place where you're going to buy, not your economy, because everything's going to seem cheap mm -hmm. because the UK is expensive. Yeah. So, <clears throat> for example, we're in a really like plush bar here at the moment. Yes. But, and I think the pint was 4 90 was yeah. it? Okay, so a pint here, 4 90 because of the setting. Um, it's, you know, it's very nice, you know, because of the setting. The jacuzzi's so, over there. It, well, yeah, there's <laughs> there's somebody in the jacuzzi. And, people wearing very nice golfy gear so well, maybe we might stick t-shirt these are sort after anyway um but they're still 490 but if you're talking to somebody that's coming from the uk yeah then that's cheap because that's what they're going to pay anyway True. for a pint not like not at least that in the setting but if you go down on the strip then you can get a pint for as little as 150. yep so when i first walked down and i was looking at the menus and the plates they've got sirloin steak about 17 euros uh, lamb chops no, sirloin's 13 it's fillets about 17. Fillet, that's it yeah, fillet fillet's on just under 20 euros normally i saw six lamb chops for 17 euros as well okay which <clears throat> in spain would be more than that i think so oh, really the and we had we went to a fish restaurant which was fantastic. Oh, that was so nice. That was nice. I right? want to go back there. We have to we have to check. Like so, myself and Lara from Six Drive, also my wife, she, uh, sister. Yeah, <laughs> your sister. We always when we treat ourselves, we'll always go and have the rice or the, the fish rice, the lobster rice or something in a fish restaurant because you always judge how good it is and check the price out. And it was just amazing. And it came to we had everything from oysters, yeah, local. You made me have an oyster. You had an oyster. <laughs> You still owe me a fiver, by the way, but you I'll ain't take it. Beer. You'll take the beer. It cost me a fiver. There you go. If we get a million hits on this video, <laughs> uh, it get, was, get hit in the bottom. <laughs> it was oysters. That, it was just everything local. And it came to, if you included the two children as one, so it's five of us, if you divide it by four, it came to 50 euros each. It's 200 euros, wasn't it? It was. We had champagne. Um, well, carbon. Yeah, that was. So for the, for the quality really of the nice. food, if you were sat anywhere else, you just wouldn't get it. No. And sat there for three hours as well. We did. I'm glad we chose that one. The wait to service of like four people coming in to attend to it was brilliant. So, I mean, there is that here. Why do I always go from tangent about food? I always do that. I can't say I love food. As you can, I love food. It's my favourite pastime. I'm yeah. drinking beer. Beer. Anything really. Um, but if you're a local celeb, then, uh, all right, you, you're pushing then, it. I'm not so really. I I'm think just on local radio and I do a bit of karaoke and and I think quizzes should... and bingo. Oh, right. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take Every, it. I'm going to take it. it. Everybody knows where everybody knows you. So <laughs> that's to be fair, yeah. that's true. Even that restaurant last night, a fellow walked past me. He was like, oh, yes. True. I was like, I, I don't, I can't keep up with all knowing who they are. To be yeah. fair. And to be fair, everybody who's done the TIE card for you knows you as well because they're exactly, following Exactly. Yeah. So. So it's great. I, mean, I, I think it's brilliant. I, and it's, but you don't get many people coming here to live full time, do you? Yeah. Is it, yeah. Oh, is it? yeah. A lot of expats. So they're all older. Like right. So it's retirees. Here. Retirees. Yeah, I'd say yeah. so. I mean, you do get the younger ones that work. I mean, before COVID happened and Brexit, obviously. Yeah. There was uh, like more younger people around right. but then since that they all went home because they didn't get their money or whatever it was the job situation the job so now there's lots of jobs in Lanzarote if you're Irish you're fine because you obviously can work here yeah but for British people they can't work you can't just as you say you have to the yeah you can't get the and it's there's paperwork. a lot of Irish people here I know this is tourists. very Irish here there's, there's more Irish bars around here than anything else is that the time of the year or is it always always Irish? always I think the Irish were the ones that sort of conquered this place before the British right because there's so many Irish bars and 
they've got good flights from Ireland as well. They come in like every four times a day or something, so something like that. Because it's, I mean, the flights, our flight was awkward times really. That's you know, Malaga, Ryanair, so. but it was Malaga, was so cheap. Yeah. For us, and obviously islanders get cheaper discounts, don't they? If you're a permanent resident, if you're a permanent resident, yeah, you get like. So, for example, when we go to Rancho, Texas on Sunday, I'll yeah. get a discount. Right. If you're a resident, yeah. which is good, and then if you're a full-time resident, you get money on. Say that I fly to you in Malaga. Yeah. I get half price flights only if you're a resident of the Canary Islands. Right. Um, That's good though. Yeah, so it's, I think it helps with something to do with if you live here and you've got family in the mainland, yeah. it's cheap because to, to pay the prices of flights full all the time, it's not. And because you're part of Spain. So um, where did the Spanish go on holiday? Because when we came, obviously it was bank holiday, but only, not bank holiday, what they call them their half turns, mm. but it's only in Spain, so Samara Blanca. And our plane was packed with families going on holiday. Then I've been to Playa Blanca, I've been here, I've been at the north as well, haven't seen one. Where are they hiding? I'm thinking the same thing, because I mean, there is Orzola and Arrieta, which is more Spanishy up the top of the island. Yeah. But, yeah, I'm not sure, because it is well, There's nothing British. up there in Orzola. Yeah, at a sea fair. They yeah. probably just mingled in with the, they've come for a British sort of holiday. So Maybe. <laughs> they mingled in. And what about the, uh, so where we went to eat the other day, what's that called, Charco? Oh, Charco, that's Arrecife. That's Arrecife. That's nice, yeah, exactly, they'll be up that area sort of thing. Right. Uh, but then the cruise ships stop there as well, don't they? So it was busy the other day when those two cruise ships stopped and they all yeah. get off the cruise, walk round and then they get back on. So that area is focused on cruise ship? Well, yeah, that's the capital, so it's focused on anybody that goes there. Right. British and Irish tend to stay in Puerto del Carmen, this is more yeah. like the coming over for your Blackpool in the sun sort of situation really yeah yeah but you but you can get if you really want to like yesterday we had a bit of a drive around yes you can have Blackpool in the sun and, and then, then you, you can, can drive off be... into a volcano exactly, exactly yeah. nowhere. go to Mirador del Rio there's loads of things to see and do yeah. but enough for, for a week two weeks holiday oh yeah and, and the there's some beautiful garden. beaches cactus, garden cactus gardens yeah I yeah. mean I've not been through I don't think it changes much. No, I haven't thought of. There's loads of stuff where I say the volcanoes. I've been. I like to, if I want to go on a day off, I'll go to Fort Ventura to get off the island. Because then, as well, nobody, know, nobody, nobody knows me. Nobody knows you. <laughs> so, yeah, again, that's another point. I'm like, right, I'm going to go. In fact, I'm going away on Tuesday with my friend. We're going up to the north of the island, so that'll be fun. I've yeah. not been up there, so. That's where we were yesterday, there. And it was very, very windy. It was nice. It was nice. Yeah. But even there, you see, when we went to the restaurants, because we were like, oh, we're going to go to a, a proper uh, Lanzarote. What do they call, what's the word for a local Lanzarote person? Do they have a word? No, like we have in Alarim. Canarian. Uh, Can no. Canarians. Can yeah. They call them Canaries. Yeah, they call them yeah, Canarian. Canarian. Uh, there is a few Canaries, like proper Canary, born and bred here, like, as well. <coughs> so there's a few around. But they, even the restaurants that there were tailored for foreign foreign yeah people but when i say tailored they were they were definitely adapted so the moment you walk in everybody speaks to you in english yeah you know and if you speak Everyone in spanish they're like shocked yeah so and how did so you got your spanish is good um it's not like yours but I, <laughs> you're like Whoa. But your spanish is, is it's very it. very 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 good it's all right. but I, i've heard you speak well you do all the appointments for us and everything your spanish is brilliant but i've noticed that no one else they really, you know, speaks a lot of Spanish. When they hear you speak Spanish. Yeah, they think I'm fluent, but I'm not. I can get by. I can have a conversation with the Spanish person and sound. But then I do get comment, commented that I'm good on the pronunciation yeah, I've heard you after a couple of beers. When I've had a few beers, <laughs> I think I'm fluent. Then I'm talking away. But there's but then no one else. Obviously, because you've been in different parts of Spain and yeah. you've needed to use your Spanish. I don't use it as much though. That's I'm losing it again because everyone's British here or Irish. You know, what I mean, they're all Europeans. And yeah, it's Germans and all sorts here. So and, and, and everyone speaks in English. You try and speak to somebody in Spanish and they just talk back to English. So I give up. I'm like, right, we'll just talk in English. <laughs> it's easier then. I've been doing that this holiday. Is it? Yeah, exactly. In the biosphere the other day. You would chat away in Spanish with the fella, ordering yeah. mojitos, and then you just end up talking to him in English because they reply in English. So I just think, well, but it's because yeah. they all want to learn English, even though they're all fluent in English. Which is which is different. You notice that when you go to like the Costa del Sol, you go to the coast, it's like that. But the moment you go inland slightly, yeah, they all know, want it's, to speak in Spanish. I think uh, this reminds me of probably how the Costa del Sol would have been a few years before. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but that's oh, cool. 
and then obviously the airport because I've just seen nothing but flights come in all the time. Probably see, there's one coming now, look, see it? I've just seen one drop in now, there's one coming yeah. in. Yeah, they come in every sort of, I don't know, half an hour, and half an hour, ten minutes sometimes. So the Jet 2, obviously the Jet 2 package holidays. Yep. Right, they're huge here now. Yeah, they pretty much own the island as the flights coming in and going. The, the morning, noon and night, morning and night. Do you think that's affected the bars? Because people like my uncle, for example, just came and we went to the, another reason uh, we popped over and we saw my uncle was here. Great. So the first day we went out and said hello to him. Um, and um, he was in a, in a hotel that just didn't leave. Exactly. They catered for people with demographics, somebody in the 70s, his wife's got limited mobility, they're in all inclusive, but they're not spending any money in the local economy. That's it, there's a lot of places like that. I think with, if people stay in Port del Carmen, it's the bigger hotels are down in Playa Blanca, the ones that cater for right. for the all inclusive packages. You can get them in Man here in Port del Carmen, but it's more accommodation with that apartment. So. Which is what we're in. The, what you're in, yeah. So it's yeah. a pool bar and you've got your own little kitchenette in there. And yeah. then you can choose to eat out. And there's so many restaurants I've just spoke about earlier. The restaurants yeah. don't need to go all-inclusive. However, my next holiday, I'm going to go all-inclusive. I, I, I would say, after doing all-inclusive <laughs> and doing this, uh, I don't really know uh, Playa Blanca because we're only there for a day. See, Playa Blanca is very smart. There's lots of restaurants there as well. <laughs> But I wouldn't go all inclusive here. No, not you, important. No, no, there's so many nice places to go. Mexican, Indian, Italian, and the quality is good. Well, no, don't get me wrong. You, they, you can pay for rubbish if you really yeah, want to. You can. But for very reasonable um, money, you can eat really well. Really well. Here. So you wouldn't go all inclusive. I'll never go skinny over when I live in here. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I, just, I, I think so. Well, it's. Uh, my uh, my waistline is definitely taking it in even more of a battering live, uh, being here for Try a living here. Don't we? <laughs> so that's cool. All right then. And is there anything else that you want to say about the island? I mean, what would you? Why would you think anybody would want to come and live here? What, there's a jet two there. That's jet two. Jet two. Look at that. There you oh, go. Yeah. Jet two coming in. Jet two. No. That'd be easy jet. Oh, it's an easy jet. Oh, it could be jet two, but it's could orange. Jet two. Yeah. Could jet orange. Could be jet two. So the you know. It's, it's slightly isolated, but it's not. You get If you're here, you're a resident, you get cheap flights to the mainland anyway. Yep. You've got three islands to hop around. Four. Four well, islands. Well, technically there is more. There's La Graciosa at the top. I've not yeah. been there yet. The main four islands of the Canaries is Foto Ventura, obviously yeah. Lanzarote, Gran Canaria and Tenerife. They're the four main. But there's, a, there's La Parma. That's the one yeah. where the volcano went off not long ago. Right. <laughs> there is a few other little islands. Yeah. And Madeira, which is not actually part of the Canaries. It's up there. Yeah, that's Portugal. Portugal. I want to go there. And so you've got all this on your doorstep. Mm -hmm. The weather's like this all year round. Yes. Because well, you keep saying that we've had the worst week they this have, year. You have had the worst week and this year. The weather's been amazing. So, <laughs> For the you know, wise. and in terms of if you were on a non lucy visa and you're working from safe, so you're working from, you're living from savings or a passive income, then if you own a property here, then, then obviously it's quite cheap living. Yes. If you but can, renting's difficult. Renting's terrible. You can't get, now it's 800 euros plus bills for one bedrooms or sometimes studios because everyone's buying properties and then doing them as holiday lets. So the people, that's why there's nobody, there's no workers. So that, if you do come on holiday here, you have to be patient as well in bars because every bar is understaffed because there's nowhere for them to live. Right. No accommodation. If they can get our accommodation now, receive here, you can stay there. It's cheaper, but you still got to get backwards and forwards to Carmen. And that's reflective of what's happening on the mainland. So yeah. exactly the same happening. So we always say to people, um, you know, it, I always say, and it's an opinion of mine, that renting first before buying isn't a bad idea. Oh, I should, I should, I I should think, do that, I think. I think that well. getting I agree. your head in... I agree. I concur. You concur. <laughs> I think getting your head in the local economy and understanding how much you're buying for is a good idea yeah. and we know that the housing market in Spain goes like that we know that but then what choice do you have if you want to come and live here say you've got a budget for a property and a budget to live on that qualifies for your visa then you might be forced into buying because you just can't find anywhere to live that's it exactly well that's why for my friends are in, in the exact same predicament now they're renting yeah and they have to buy so they want to buy yeah but they are renting but they need to move somewhere else because there's actually no houses yet they're so expensive in the house. Lanzarote has gone through the roof. It's the most expensive island to rent and buy on. It's, uh, for some and reason, I Lanzarote. That they're, pre they're preparing more plots of land to build on. Well, they need to. There's not enough. This it's getting a busier island. As in, I think years ago, Tenerife was the main one around yeah. Canaria. This is now up and coming with. 
don't know, just everything. It's getting very popular. Very, very comparative, the prices. Considering the cost of living here, I don't know the cost of the taxes, the properties, but considering the price of the food, the fuel and everything that I've seen, the prices are comparative to Malaga. So I looked down there, like a, an, an apartment was lined back from the front. Uh, they call it Segunda Linea, was 200 grand for one or two bedroom apartment. In oh, yeah. Malaga, probably a little bit more, but that'd be it, depending on where you go. The villas were 350 up. And so, I, yeah. now, uh, probably now in Malaga, you're looking to go quite inland for that kind of price, but yeah, you can't go that far. You can't go that far. <laughs> so you can drive <laughs> so, more away in like four hours. So. so it's not, but even up on the hill there, I was looking at like, the townhouses, they were still at 195 grand. So, so it's, uh, but then as you say, if you're coming from the UK and got the, the Northern Terrace yet. house is worth 250 grand then you know and you've got a pension and it's still still a good option definitely i mean if you've got money to move and you can do it get in touch with you and get yourself over to wherever and the taxes the, ta the taxes are cheap <laughs> this is one thing they've gone it? up recently believe it or not you can it's get three euros to go everywhere well, no it's not quite but it used to be like 290 to get wow. it like most places and it has it's been up, gone up twice in the last couple of years because of the petrol money yeah but it's so much salute was well expensive for taxes but here it's cheap and Malaga, so we have a minimum charge of like a tenner. So a minimum charge, I think, getting. here is what, is it 350 now? 350. No, it's less than 350. Three. 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 Crazy. So, so you can do the full strip from here to there, and yeah. the meter doesn't go up, and you go, oh, there's three euros. I'm going to be glad they have a tip, but it's cheap for taxes. So anyway, well, that was Jess. Now, if you come over and you're going to be registering your own new visa, you're going to meet Jess at the police station, despite what she says, her Spanish is amazing, and she is a local celebrity and for all our clients who have, who have already seen her and met her here you know that so you put, drops a comment below yeah lanzarote is somewhere where we we can serve now for the non loop to visa in person from start to finish because we've got just here on the ground to do the appointments in arecife which i have to say was very easy to park when i went to see but they were a little bit miserable the policemen so you definitely need somebody with you to do that <laughs> and uh yeah we're gonna see i'm gonna put a couple more videos up you will already see videos on the channel about Lanzarote that we've been recording, but I haven't got that much because I've been on a bit of a holiday as well. And uh, thanks for having me on the radio show. Thank you for joining me. I had a great time. Thanks, Antonis, for karaoke. Hey. Thanks for looking after our clients. You didn't sing, though. I didn't sing, though. No, I don't <laughs> sing. Valid. I, I, my son sang, but I'm yeah. definitely not singing. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, thanks for watching the podcast. And um, if you check out the link at the end of this video you'll see who's coming on next cheers oh cheers yeah happy holidays chris happy holidays <laughs>